Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by the Real Foot National Wildlife Refuge. Thank you, Zach, and welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Zach, before I introduce today's very special guest, what's something you've discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? Uh, well, Scott, I know you usually may be looking for something specific here, uh, but I have to say my first day coming to work recently was the first day I've walked through these doors without my nephews or my own kids. I uh, quickly learned Discovery Park has more to offer than people may realize, and you can learn a lot without kids in your care here. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, okay. Our special guest today is Stacy Overman, the creator of Lavender Kisses Farm in Hollow Rock, Tennessee. It's about an hour from Discovery Park between McKenzie and Camden. So whether you're coming from Memphis or Nashville, you can stop off at Lavender Kisses Farm before or after your visit. Welcome, Stacy. Thank you. So glad to be here, Scott. So tell me, I'm so interested about how long has it been? About what? Well, actually, it was on my. It was ten years ago. It was on my fiftieth birthday. My family and I did a trip to um, uh, uh, Virginia uh, for my birthday. I'm sorry, it was North Carolina, uh, almost to the coast, and there was a lavender farm, and it was absolutely one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen. And we stopped and took photos in it and everything, so it smelled really good. So I know a little tiny bit about lavender farms, but um, tell me a little bit about what inspired you to buy or start a lavender farm, and then we'll back up and hear a little bit about your childhood. Absolutely. Well, it's it's funny because um, I have to give you a little bit of a backstory. We were RV living for about five years all across the United States um, after my husband and I were on a TV show on Sci-Fi Network back in the day. Well, we had met some fans that reached out and were just wonderful people out of Tennessee. And they said, if you ever get to Tennessee, you've got to stop. We would love to show you around. And so five years before we actually moved to Tennessee, we were flying from Oregon to Florida for a presentation with some investors. And we stopped in Nashville and met up with those folks and they showed us all around. And my husband said at first, Larry, he says, man, it just feels like home here. And I thought, yeah, it does. It it just feels very comfortable. It wasn't Nashville itself. It was Tennessee in general. And so we always thought that when we're ready to semi-retire and actually settle down and buy a home, that we were going to look in Tennessee. So when that time came, we were working in West Virginia and we started looking 30 minutes outside of Nashville. And we kept going further, further and further from Nashville. (laughs) And uh, we really, truly believe that God brought us to Hollow Rock because there is so many weird nuances that we should never have found this property. Our realtor couldn't find it. It wasn't listed correctly. And so long story short, we wound up seeing this place and fell in love with the land and we purchased it. And so we go back to West Virginia because we're not moving here right away And my husband's deciding, hey, we need to do something with this land. What should we do? And he's reached out to the agriculture people around here. And he's like, potatoes, tomatoes, what should we do? And I said, well, I'll pray about it. And we had used lavender essential oil for many years. We we would put it in the diffuser. It would calm calm our nerves and our our stress levels, you know, bring it down. And so that's about all I knew about lavender. And uh, when I prayed about it, I just had this overwhelming sense the word lavender came to me. <clears throat> so I tell him, he's like, oh, okay. <clears throat> so a couple of weeks go by, <clears throat> excuse me. And he says, okay, we got to get really serious. We got to try to figure out how to make a living with this property that we're buying. So I pray about it again and I get this overwhelming sense of lavender again. So he dives into the research and he's like, well, this could be a good thing. 
Now, mind you, we don't know nothing about it except for the essential oil, wonderful benefits and properties that it has. Yeah. How did you even know if it would grow in that <laughs> climate? So you didn't even know that. I mean, we were just, he did a lot of the research. And so granted, like I really relied on his, um, ne- you know, his skills of finding like, is this going to be profitable? Is this really something we can do? Is it going to grow in zone seven in West Tennessee? And of course, COVID was going on at that time. And so we joined the um, Lavenders Growers Association And took all of these conferences and classes that we could via Zoom because they weren't meeting in person. And so we were learning so much, so fast. And that is when we purchased 4,000 plugs of lavender and we started growing them in West Virginia in a little room with some grow lights. And then we U-hauled them here. So we started that way and literally that's kind of how it started. And it sounds kind of silly, but it was just like, this is what we're going to do. We're all in. Let's go for it. (laughs) Now I'm, I'm going to, we're going to put a pin in that and we're coming back to that because I've got a million questions on that. But first of all, I want to back all the way up. I can tell from your accent that you're not from around here as they say. (laughs) So tell us a little bit about where Stacy came from. Yes. Oh, so funny. Well, I feel like I'm starting to sound a little more like I'm here, but it's probably a Heinz 57 all smished together. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, I was born in Southern Idaho and I always joke, I was born in Rupert, but I lived in a sequa, which was in the country. And the sequa is probably not on the map. Sometimes Rupert's not on the map. Sure. My wife is from Boise, Idaho. Three hours south. Like she's going to come to Salt Lake. She'd go right through that town. One stoplight. Yep. Yes, right on. So we're both Idahoans. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was an Air Force brat also. So when I was little, I lived in Italy and with my family and came back to the States in time to start first grade. And then when I was 16, my parents moved to Oregon. And when I graduated from high school, they moved on and left and I stayed in Oregon. So honestly, I was 28 years in Oregon. And in fact, that's where my daughter and my grandson still live. And uh, then let me let me think where to go here. So Oregon was my best, my most stayed state. I had a husband that passed away. And two years after that, I met my husband now. And so when his daughter moved out, that's when we started RV living and living all over the United States. So I have a little bit of Texas accent, a little bit of this accent, that accent. It just all, if I'm with you, I, all of a sudden I'm a chameleon. I start talking like you. <laughs> so, so what, um, what was the thinking that went behind that? You um, obviously bought an RV. Talk to me a little bit. Cause I'm fascinated by that as well. Yes. Well, after my husband and I, my husband now, we were on a TV show for a couple of seasons and we had originally lived in Eugene, Oregon, and his daughter wanted to get more into acting. So then that took us to Portland, Oregon. And at that time, I also was a talent agent, putting people in movies and things like that. And so when she moved out and we became empty nesters, um, my husband was more in oil and gas and could not find work up in Oregon for nothing. And we were getting to the point where it was like, we really don't need to stay here. Why don't we head down to Texas where he had used to live and see about him getting back into oil and gas. So I sold my talent agency business and we didn't have an RV at that time. We went down to Texas. He kind of got started and about Oh, less than a year went by and then he really got his foot into oil and gas. And so what we did basically was pretty much gave away everything that we owned and we got an RV. So we didn't have to worry about our dogs not being able to get into a rental, <laughs> things like that. that so must we have been, uh, this or, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but <clears throat> was it liber- liberating to shed all know. of that? Well, it's tough because I had memories you know, lots of memories. And I had lots of stuff. Holy Moses. And this, it's just stuff, but you know, you, you get a memory with that thing and a memory with this thing. And I had to really kind of mourn over 
releasing mm. some of that stuff yeah, because you know, I had I had my first husband passed in a plane crash. My second husband mm. passed from cancer. Mm. And so that was tough. It was really hard. But once I got through that fresh, that threshold, I realized I really only need two cooking pans. I really mm. don't need a whole big set of pans. You know, you just start to think, I really don't need more than three jeans, you know, like why? <laughs> So it really was, it was nice to um, simplify life, but yes. Um, you mentioned you were on a TV show. You can't just lay that down and not have me pick it up. <laughs> what TV show were you on? We were on the TV show that was called Ghost Mine, like the ghost, like the spirit. Mm -hmm. And my husband now had purchased property in Eastern Oregon before we ever met. And there happened to be gold mines on those on that mountainside and Hollywood actually reached out to him because they were looking for a documentary reality TV show. And this was different because it wasn't mining, like digging a hole. It was underground mining. So we actually would walk underground into the mine, like a mile into the mountain. And there was two seasons of that. And um, that's kind of how we met because a friend connected us that knew I was a talent agent and knew he was getting asked by Hollywood. And he's like, Stacy can negotiate your contracts for you. <laughs> and so- Wow, that's interesting. And you negotiated yourself into hmm. being a wife. I did not realize that was gonna happen, but we met for <laughs> coffee and there was butterflies and it was like, what's going on here? <laughs> it was meant to be. <laughs> yeah, that's, the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's let's talk more about let's go back to uh, the lavender. Um, so you load one thing that I immediately wonder is when you're loading all those lavenders up in a U-Haul, where <laughs> did they all make it? Oh lordy, it was a hot mess. Um, we had racks and racks of them, and we had shrink shrink wrap them. But you know, there's potholes and railroad tracks and all that. So when they got here, we did have some upside down tipped over things and a few of them didn't make it. But for the majority out of that 4000, we we had quite a bit that were here. And then we 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 actually didn't plant all 4000 there. We we added to it once we got here. But yes, it was it was interesting. We had a lot of dirt on that floor of that you all. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get pulled over and have to convince them that it was lavender? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll tell you a funny story. When we were buying the grow lights um, at Menards <laughs> in um, West Virginia, our cart was just full and people were giving us the funniest eyes. And I was like, no, really, it's for lavender. It's really no, it's for lavender. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that raised some eyebrows. <laughs> we only bought all of them that they had, you know. <laughs> So now, did you and your husband actually uh, dig the holes and put the lavender in the ground, or did you have help? Yeah. So, well, let me back up. Once the lavender that that got here in the U-Haul, and then we ordered more, we had a whole dump truck dump what's called fines over on the side of our house, and that is like little gravelly um, rock. And I'm pretty much myself. Every once in a while, he'd come over on a weekend and help me. But I sat in my beach chair and filled biodegradable bags with that rock until that rock was, it was way above my head until it was way down to my knees. And I planted those plugs that were the size of my pinky, all of them. And they, I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. It took me over two months to do that. And I could wow. only go out there about 630 in the morning and last till about 930 at night. So they were in those bags for a year. And it took me two hours every day just to get them all watered. And then a year ago, April, thank goodness, we had volunteers from church, volunteers from town. My parents came out from Nevada. And one weekend, we hand dug 4,000 holes in the field. And we tried it with the tractor, and it was just going to take way too long. And uh, so we had guys digging holes. I I dug probably at least 200 holes myself. And then we hand planted all of them and I couldn't have done it without the help of friends and family. And yeah. My and computer. so the lavender, the lavender is one business where you're growing lavender and then, but another business that's, you know, as a person who works in tourism uh, is the yes. whole agritourism component. Uh, did you know from the very mm -hmm. beginning that you were going to incorporate that and, and tell also tell us a little bit about 
uh, what you guys do uh, sure. for guests who come to visit? Absolutely. Well, we had a thought about what does agritourism look like and what could we do? So that took us about a year to kind of figure that out. Um, I actually had the idea of getting some smaller animals because lavender is only in bloom for about a month. So really, you know, it's what do you do the rest of the year? What mm-hmm. brings them here? Because, yes, we decided to make products. And so I make handmade lavender soaps, body butters, pillow sprays, bath salts, bath bombs, you name it. Why aren't we selling those at Discovery Park of America in our gift shop? I don't know, but let's talk about that. Let, we we are going to have a conversation after this so that people who are listening, the next time you visit, oh, you'll be able to buy some of these things. That would be awesome. Yes, love it. And it's all handcrafted, all handmade. We're small batch. Like, I mean, I make most everything. My husband started with me and then I just took the ball and ran with it. Um But we also decided that some smaller animals would be nice because not everybody's into lavender and animals are a great source of like animal therapy and and it's just fun. So our first buy was um, miniature goats and uh, we had a couple pigs. And then I was like, you know what? Highland cows are in like you go to Hobby Lobby and every other aisle has got a Highland cow of some sort. And I think they're cute as heck. And so I've never owned a cow in my life. I've never, I've owned goats and I've owned pigs and I've owned dogs and cats, but nothing else. Next thing you know, we've got a shipment of a Highland cow coming from Texas that was just a baby, wasn't even a year yet. And now for, for city folks who what? don't know exactly which cow what? is the Holland cow, it's the one that has kind of the funny bangs. Yes. The, they're brown oh, yeah. and they have little bangs. <laughs> yes. And every one of them has horns, and which horns. is so cute because people think only bulls have horns. But Scottish Highland cows all have horns because it helps regulate their body temperature. See, everybody learned something today at this right. park. Yeah, that's right. And you know, yeah. it, the Scottish Highland cows actually originated being six feet tall, and they used them as oxen. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the things I share when guests come to the farm. We have mid mini Scottish Highland cows. So instead of our bull being like 3,000 pounds or more, our bull is only like 1,300 pounds. Mm. And he's still intimidating because he's big. But he's a gentle giant and he's still small (laughs) compared to other bulls. But um, in Scotland, they call them hairy coos. Huh. That's actually translated into a hairy dog. So they're like big dogs. (laughs) Yeah, that's so funny. And so um, you obviously have a lot of kids who come. Yes. Um, Zach, have you, you have kids. Have you oh, taken your children to? You got to come down. Lavender? I Kisses have fun. not, but we'll, we'll have to come that way. Good. So we do hay wagon rides most Saturdays and we do private rides. If people have a group of eight or more and they want to do a private tour. So what we do is we load everybody up in the hay wagon and we go right into the pasture where the cows are. And we stop the tractor and we have cattle cube treats and everybody gets to stand up and move around in the wagon, pet the cows, take pictures, feed them. And everybody has a blast. There is we've had as young as like three months old on the hay wagon to I think as old as we had a gentleman in his 90s that we helped get up there and his whole family came. And it was just such a really neat thing for them to do with their father. How um, many do you have all together now? We have three. Oh, the cows or the wagon? Yeah, yeah the cows. cows. Well, we just had two babies. So now we have six. Okay. Um, our last baby was born May 18th, which our lavender started blooming super early, May 18th. So that baby was called Lavendula, which is the oh. official name for lavender. Oh my goodness. If my, if my wife and girls could come out there and see lavender blooming and a baby cow with right. bangs and horns called lavender dooley, I'm telling Lavendula. you, I mean, <laughs> how could you go wrong? Right. And then the baby born in February is mulata. mulata. Oh and she looks that, like a big teddy bear. That is adorable. <laughs> so yes, we have all heifers and we have one of every color except for we don't have a silver yet, but our bull is a dun color. 
Um, we've got a red. Her name is Lady. Our bull is named Flint. We've got a um, uh, Sasha is white and she's just the favorite of everybody. Everybody loves her. And plus, she's super sweet. And then we've got Sweetie. That was our very first one. And she's a brindle color. And uh, Mulata is like a brindle. And our newest is a yellow. So it's amazing that you have such a variety of different colors. And so we're real excited about that. And we'll soon have our lavender Orpington chickens out where people can come and see them too. And we just had our first egg yesterday and they lay pink to lavender colored eggs. And yesterday's was pink. So I was super oh, wow. excited about that. Congratulations. Thank you. So exciting. <laughs> so, ha- so how... For people, you know, a lot of people listen and and they ha- a lot of people have ideas that they mm-hmm. never actually get to see come to fruition. Uh, mm-hmm. What what inspired you, or or why do you think you're able to pull the trigger on all these adventures and ideas, and other folks hesitate? Wow, um, that's a good question. You know, <laughs> hmm. I just feel like God just leads us down these paths and he opens these doors and we have the choice to walk through them or to not. We have the choice to be afraid and think of all the reasons why we shouldn't. And we have the choice to just step in and trust and and have the faith that it's going to work. And I'll be honest, like I've been out in that lavender field hand weeding. It took me a month to hand weed the top lavender field last fall. And there's been times when I'm out there wondering why plants have died. And I have cried out and said, Lord, I heard you say lavender and I'm doing it. So come (laughs) now. And I swear, like, as soon as we started the hay wagon rides, it, the floodgates opened Mm. because that was the thing that I really believe is that we were supposed to bring people here so that they can have that animal therapy. They can have that nature therapy they can get off their phones, get off the television, get off the internet and just be and come out to the lavender field and smell the lavender and lower those cortisol levels in their body. Cause that's what lavender does is helps relieve that stress hormone. And this land is ours, but it's not ours. And so we're to share it. And so that's the biggest thing you'll see on our website. It says, come visit heaven. And I feel like this is a little piece of heaven right here. I start get emotional. It's a little piece of heaven that we're supposed to share with other people. Because yeah, it's, it's it's beautiful. Looking at your Instagram and your your Facebook, I mean, you guys have done an amazing job. And I was showing it to my wife last night, and we're definitely uh, planning a trip to come see you with our daughters, who are adult daughters, but still, uh, you know, we're we're gonna have a good time. <laughs> um, and and but it did. Uh, also beg the question, how is your social media and your website presence so well done? What, what is your, are you the one who's doing that? And then what is your background that led you to be able to have such talent? (laughs) It is all me. (laughs) I'm like, I don't know how I'd have time to do everything, but I do. Um, well, I've been in marketing almost all my life. Um, when I lived in Oregon, I was a sales and marketing manager for a title and escrow company in real estate. So I was the one that was helping realtors market themselves. I was the one helping mortgage brokers market themselves and land developers and also connecting those people. Um, and so that was a marketing marketing thing that I did like for years. I also went to college for sales and marketing and business. And then I've started a few businesses on my own, like the... Uh, talent agency that I sold. And, and then when we were RV living, I get bored. I'm just kind of that person. I can't sit on the couch. And so I actually started another business when we were RV living and I was a spiritual coach and I was coaching women. Um, They wanted to understand what their sole purpose was and they wanted to hear from God. And so from all of the trauma that I've experienced in losing loved ones and battling cancer myself and almost losing my own life before I turned 40. um, I've gone through a lot of trauma and I learned how to heal from that so that I could hear God and understand what is he trying to tell me? So I started coaching women on how to heal those traumas so that they could understand what their sole purpose was. And 
And that turned into a mastermind after that, that they wanted to take it further. Some of them decided they wanted to start a coaching business or a business of some sort to bless others from what they learned. So I started a mastermind program where I actually taught them how to open a business, how to get it started. And I just literally pulled back the veil and showed them everything that I do. And so it's, it's just been trial by fire of, okay, Facebook's changing again. Okay. Instagram's changing again. And so I've been doing social media and marketing for as long as I can remember. And so it just was a natural fit. I was like, okay, it's just, I've got to market a farm and I've got to market this event. And people have asked me, well, where are you advertising at to get so many people were sold out almost every weekend on our hay, ride, hay wagon rides. And so I've had to make it to where they have to buy tickets ahead of time because I'll be sold out two weeks ahead. And I'm like, I have not done one advertising dollar anywhere. Wow. And so it's not just me. I mean, yes, I have the skill and the talent and the understanding, but I really think that also the faith and God is just opening those doors and uh, making it work. Well, and then I think also you clearly have an entrepreneurial spirit you know, that you've uh, fostered and grown and uh, obviously tried a lot of things, succeeded, failed, learned, dusted yourself off, started back over again. So, (laughs) you know, I think that's where that entrepreneurial spirit comes from. Yes. Yes. And a fail is not a fail. You still fall flat on your face and you're five foot 11 forward more, right? Like it's, it doesn't matter if you fail because you've learned something. So, yes. And we've learned a lot. Fire hose learning here on the farm. I've never been a rancher. I've never been a farmer. And uh, yeah, just like, OK, there's well, I love um, I love the fact that you chose <laughs> lavender instead of potatoes. Me too. Idaho. I yeah. mean, I love potatoes and, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm an Idaho girl, <laughs> but lavender is awesome. It is awesome. So um, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to talk about lavender because um, I was curious, um, and we're going to share with some folks some benefits of lavender right when we get back. The Real Foot National Wildlife Refuge was established about 15 miles southwest of Discovery Park to manage the upper third of Real Foot Lake as a refuge for migratory birds. There you'll find a wintering ground of waterfowl and bald eagles. They host multiple activities throughout the spring, summer, and fall, including the annual youth fishing rodeo, junior ranger camp, various workshops, archery programs, guided canoe trips, eagle tours, and more. For their complete schedule, Google Real Foot National Wildlife Refuge. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave only positive reviews on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. This is your host, Scott Williams, and our guest today is Stacy Overman, um, owner, I don't know if owner is the right word, lead farmer of <laughs> Lavender Kisses Farm, weeder extraordinaire, um, I guess you could say. So talk to me a little bit about um, lavender. A lot of folks listening uh, may be in big cities and may not exactly be able to know what which which of those plants is lavender. So describe lavender itself and then tell us about some of the uh, benefits that you found. Absolutely. You know, I find a lot of people when I tell them I'm a lavender farmer, they go, oh, how is the lilacs doing? No, it's not a <laughs> lilac. <laughs> Mm -hmm. (laughs) because that's the purple that we think of, right? Mm -hmm. Um, A lilac is a bush that's really big, kind of gets like a tree. Lavender is more like when you look at rosemary. It's a plant that resembles that shape um, of rosemary, but it's in the mint family, believe it or Mm -hmm. not. I don't know how or why, because mint and that doesn't look the same, but it's in that. Does it, do you find it spreads the same? Like when I plant mint, I cannot get rid of it. Is lavender the same way? No, it is not. Unfortunately. Now, if you have a lavender that, that goes to seed and you don't, you don't trim it or anything and it drops seeds, you might be lucky that it will come back, but planting lavender from seed is very difficult. So, um, No, typically it's easier to plant from a plug and a plug is just a little small start that's about the size of your pinky. And you need to baby that in a nursery for a while until it really gets that taproot 
um, established. And then you have to be really careful that that taproot doesn't get damaged when you actually plant it into the ground. Um, the benefits of lavender are, there are so many and I'm probably going to miss something, but um, the number one thing is it lowers your cortisol level. So whether you're using an essential oil, whether you have bundles around that you can smell, whether you have one of our heating eye masks that you warm up and lay on your face, like whatever it is, body butter, pillow spray, anything, as long as there's lavender in it and it's a good quality essential oil that they've used, it will help lower that cortisol. And for those that don't understand that, that's that stress hormone. And so we all live in such a stressful world that who doesn't need some lavender? <laughs> you know? It's, I yeah. need I need a truckload. <laughs> can, you, can you send a truckload over here? I'll hook you up. <laughs> now, is it a perennial or an annual? Does it come back? It, year it, after year? it doesn't go away necessarily. Like we cut it back to like a snowball shape and then it goes dormant through the winter. So a lot of people that just randomly buy one and put it in their flower garden, they might pull it out thinking that it's dead, but it probably isn't. Um, you got to wait until after the last frost in the spring, it will then kickstart back into growing and when their blooms come on and they're fully established, they're like a three to four to five year plant. Um, they will be three feet by three feet wide and that tall. I mean, that's why we plant them so far apart because they need the airflow. And that way, when their blooms bloom, their blooms are just barely sweeping and touching each other. Um, so they can last anywhere from eight to 15 or more years in the ideal conditions. So, so I should, I've got some planted in my garden, so I should cut it back um, at the end of summer. Um, you, at, after you've cut the blooms off, that's, mm -hmm. that's one trimming. And gotcha. then right before the last frost, you want to trim them all up into like a snowball shape, but don't okay. cut the woody stemmy areas. You're just mm. cutting just to the top of that. Okay. And then you will trim one more time in the spring after the last frost. And gotcha. you'll see once you trim them there, whoosh, they're just going to really take off. Mm. Um, so there's only really three times that you need to mess with them and cut them. But really, you need to neglect the plant. Um, more, nine times out of 10, people kill them by overwatering them. Mm. Um, you only water them often when you first plant them. And then after that, just let Mother Nature do its do its work. We have no way of getting water out to our field. So Oh, that's interesting. All about the rain. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, it, then lately, I mean, it didn't rain for a long time around here. And then the last, you know, few days, it's just been like raining constantly. Yes. Are they getting too wet? They could. They could. We did lose a lot in the part of our field that runs down and has a natural like crevice that the water follows. We lost a lot of plants in that area. Mm -hmm. So, yes, um, it, it is possible to lose them. To go back to the benefits, too, um, it improves your mood, relieves stress. It helps you to sleep better. Like literally, we make a pillow spray that's really a linen spray. I even carry one in my purse and spray it on me before I go into a business in this humidity here. But it'll help you sleep. My husband loves it. Every time he goes to some engine builder place or whatever, I've got an order for six pillow sprays <laughs> for that huh, whole so you shop. spray it on the pillow in the hotel before you go to sleep and it helps you sleep. Absolutely. Absolutely. But also the really wonderful thing, um, I'm just going to speak for the Amish that are around here. They will buy me out of body butter every time I'm at an event near them. They put it on the bottoms of their feet. Um, they'll put it on the babies to help the babies sleep. And they swear by it. In fact, my dad has uh, diabetes and his bottoms of his feet are really bad. They crack and get all really bad. Well, I sent him some body butter and his doctor even asked him, what'd you change? Your feet look better. He says, well, my daughter made me this butter. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're a hot sleeper, don't put it on your toes if you put it on your feet because it will raise your body temperature. So just your feet, not your toes. Um, my husband had surgery and had a huge scar um, where they fixed his bicep. And putting body butter on it every day, his scar is almost unseeable. And it was a big one. Huh. So it can help with stretch marks, scars. It also boosts hair growth. And for some reason, and I don't know the science, lavender helps men lose weight. 
I don't know why not women, but it helps men lose weight. That's what studies show. So, but not you don't eat it. No, you we just spray it. it. Can you eat lavender? Spray it. it. You can eat. There is a culinary lavender. In mm. fact, we make a lavender simple syrup. And when you come for the hayride tour, we offer a sample of our lavender lemonade. And people love it. I finally got caught up and made a big enough couple of batches that I'm not selling out every weekend. But you can add it to your tea, your coffee, your espresso, Hmm. um, mocktails, cocktails, all kinds of things. You can make syrup for your pancakes with it. Um, You can have a hot tea with it. Even the buds, the buds we put in sachets, you can put those in a little strainer thing for your tea. And yes, you can actually drink wow. it now. If it's not culinary, it may taste a little funny. It might be like, yeah. wow, this is perfume in my mouth. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you do want to make sure that you have a culinary brand. But yes. That's so interesting. Um, I did not realize that. And if yeah. folks if folks are listening right now and they happen to be somewhere other than West Tennessee um, and they want to buy some of this stuff, do you sell any online yet? We sure do. We have a website, lavenderkissesfarm.com, and we've got a shop in there. A lot of times I will make something and I don't even have time to put it on that website. So if you follow us on Facebook, Lavender Kisses Farm on Facebook, I will post something there and literally like two days later, I'm sold out and I don't even get it to the website. So I will take private messages. I'll help you, whatever you want to do. You don't have to go so formal on the website. You can just message me on Facebook and I can definitely help you out. Well, we will uh, link to the Facebook page and the website in the show notes. So if anybody forgets and you're driving, you can't write it down, you can go to the show notes afterwards and find the link. Um, And also, same thing, if they want to come to the Hayride, they need to get on there and make a reservation, right? Yes. Um, We didn't used to say tickets have to be purchased ahead of time, but we had so many people just showing up. And that was back when we only had one wagon that we were doing three hay wagon tours a day and people would sit and wait for like an hour and a half for the next one. So we've invested in two more hay wagons. So now we have a wagon train and we can have up to 40 some people. Mm. So purchasing the tickets ahead of time, it's only $12 and under age two is free. And, uh, it's about an hour and a half of fun and something that most people have never done. We've had so many men on the tour. There's been times we've had a majority of the tour was men. These I've had an older gentleman. It was so cute. He says, I've raised everything in my barn. You can imagine I had to come out and see these hairy little things. <laughs> <laughs> the cows with bangs. Uh, I, I want to get a bangs. selfie with a cow with bangs. Is what That's I want. right. So, They're so, so cute. No, we're, we're definitely, uh, you're, when are you open? Are you open all year long or is there a particular time that you're only open? Absolutely. Well, right now we're trying to, um, we're we're looking at grants and things like that to build a farm store that will be out by our field. But right now our farm store is dedicated in our daylight basement. And that's where I make everything. That's the whole store. We, we stop the wagon behind our house and let everybody come through the, the store and then back to the hay wagon ride. Um, so by appointment only right now. So you, all you gotta do is message us that way I'm not in town or in my PJs. (laughs) (laughs) and we just bring you on in and that way you don't have to walk through the whole house. We just have everybody go through the daylight basement area and you're right in the store and then out you go. And, and then also next summer, I used to say July and August, but our lavender bloomed early. So sometime between May and August, be watching when the lavender field blooms, we have you pick events. Mm. And so it'll be usually in the morning time when it's not as hot and we'll open up and have hours so that you can come out, take pictures, see it, um, cut your own bundle. And then, of course, you'll come in and be able to shop for other things. And there's really nothing like seeing a huge field of lavender. It's the coolest yeah. thing ever. Um, I was looking through my pictures the other day and saw my family in lavender fields. Really, really fun. Well, thank you for the work you're doing for West Tennessee, for West Tennessee tourism, for uh, creating this uh, incredible place. Kudos on your success. Thank you. And soon we'll have an Airbnb cabin available. So we're working on one right now. Goodness, you are busy. 
Yes, we're remodeling a building right behind our place that we just snatched up a little bit ago. And we're going to have a couple RV hookups and some tenting sites. So people are like, if you make that, we're coming. We want to be able to take our lawn chair and sit and just watch the cows. (laughs) Now, have you been to Discovery Park yet? I have not. I almost came when I had my nephew come to visit from Nevada and then it just didn't work out. So I've got to get up there and come and see. Yes, you're just an hour away. I'll give you a personal tour. Thank um, you. And then we need to get you some Discovery Park of America brochures to share with all those people that are visiting yes. you. They come back up here. We would love that because everyone that comes here is coming from all over. And that's the first thing they say is, is there something else fun to do that we can come and see? I mean, we, we've had people up here from Texas, North Carolina, sure, uh, all over. Like, well, I'm like, send them, send them I, up our way. <laughs> I will. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It was, it was so much fun hearing more about when I heard there was a, a lavender farm nearby. I was like, man, I got to get on this and learn more about it. So thank you for sharing the, the uh, scoop with us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Scott. And thanks to all you listeners who've joined Zach and me today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com. Discovery Park of America.